Hi, I'm Marvin Plackett and today is Tuesday, May 12th. Greetings to all residents, to all staff, and to all guests, to everyone around the world. Um, we have two additional cases of COVID-19 at Episcopal Homes. Both are staff members. Uh, one is a nursing assistant that works at Episcopal Church Home. The other is a nursing assistant that works at the gardens. So that brings our total confirmed cases at Episcopal Homes to six. Uh, you will recall there were four before. Uh, five of the six are staff and one is a resident. The resident, you will recall, lives at Seabury. Uh, for the first four, all four are doing well and they are recovering. The most recent two, I don't know their status at this time. So once again, we have a total of six. Five of the six are staff. One is a resident. Um, I want to remind you about some things that I have mentioned, but it's been a while since I mentioned them. If any staff are feeling uh, any of the symptoms, experiencing any of the symptoms, we tell them very clearly, and we've told staff over and over and over, do not come to work, do not show up. Rather, call us, let us know what you're experiencing, and then go see your doctor to get tested. So those primary six symptoms of COVID-19. And, and to let you also know that they don't have, staff don't have an incentive to come to work because um, if they're feeling any of the symptoms, go see their doctor, have that doctor slip, they are paid. They are paid. Um, so to you staff that are listening, you are paid while you are at home. Um, so there is no incentive to come to work if you're feeling symptoms. And of course, if you're feeling healthy, we need you. And we are very, very grateful to all of our staff that are so diligently coming to work every day as scheduled. Um, all are needed. We are deeply grateful. Um, some additional details uh, for the staff. All staff, I want to remind all residents and, and all staff, all staff are screened before every single shift. That is that their temperature is taken and then we have the series of questions that we go through as a screening tool to make sure that if they think they have been exposed to someone that has tested positive, showing any signs, any concerns, again that screen will catch them. And then we don't have them work that shift. Um, I want to go back for a moment to those that two cases that were just confirmed that anytime there is a case confirmation, naturally we immediately uh, put in place all of the requirements that are necessary. They of course do not come to work. They get tested or, well, they have been confirmed. They've been tested. Um, and then we immediately proceed with contact tracing. Um, whom else might have had sustained, uh, sustained uh, exposure? Um, and. Uh, were they wearing their uh, protected equipment? Were they wearing their face mask at all times and their um, goggles and so forth? So all those things matter. Uh, so to let you know that we are very vigilant about um, all of these matters anytime we have a suspicion of a case and then of course especially if there is a confirmed case. Um, on that front, to let you know that yesterday the health department, they dropped in at the gardens to do a special inspection on our infection control practices, the things that we have in place, um, all practices that we have in place related to COVID-19. And the health department was extremely complimentary. Uh, we definitely received a passing score and they were extremely complimentary about all of our procedures and policies that we have in place at Episcopal Homes. That same survey is occurring here at Episcopal Church Home uh, today. And uh, so we look forward to hearing any recommendations they might have. And tomorrow I will report to you what they have told us about our practices. I want to clarify something that a document last Friday, um, residents and staff actually, um, you saw some, uh, probably a few documents from me last Friday. In putting together a number of documents, we had one slight um, a mistake, and fortunately, Dusty, thank you, um, astute residents and staff pointed this out to us, and so we've already made that change uh, promptly. Uh, on our um, frequently asked questions document, 
the question is, um, can my loved one take me out for a walk or to get a cup of coffee since I can't visit them in the building? And the cup of coffee should not have been in there because the, the, the way it reads now is, can my loved one take me out for a walk since I can't visit them in the building? And the answer to the question of, can my loved one take me out for a walk? Yes, that is the correct answer. Um, we absolutely, though, must be practicing them. Well, first of all, they need to know that they are not showing any symptoms or have COVID-19 themselves. Uh, and then they must be practicing the social distancing, wearing of the face mask, um, all those measures that we have in place. Um, but going for a cup of coffee, no, that's not okay because that implies hopping in the car with someone, which then you're not going to be six feet apart. And I would assume then, since restaurants aren't open, going to a drive through whatever. But the point is, um, having the cup of coffee together, no, unless they brought a cup of coffee with them, you're going for a walk and you're sitting at the park bench and you're sitting six feet apart. Um, so that, that would be the only circumstance. But the point is, we have clarified that, that no, not, we're not saying it's okay to go for a cup of coffee because there's too much risk that you will not be maintaining the key practices that we've had in place with great diligence. Uh, but going for the walk, yes. And of course, we have walking groups on our, going on on our campus um, several times a week. So if you're interested in that, by all means, uh, contact the Active Living uh, people and they will help you out. <clears throat> Another thing I wanna remind you about is that remember that the studies that have been done um, in on um, where it is on a random basis, those studies confirm that roughly speaking, 30% of the people that have COVID-19 that test positive do not have symptoms. They are asymptomatic. That just shows how vital it is that we keep continue to be vigilant with all the practices that we have in place. The truth is, you could have it, I could have it, and we don't know it. That is possible. You think, ah, oh, it's not likely. Well, if 30% of the people that have it don't know it, then none of us can assume that we are free of it. Therefore, it is so vital that we socially distance, that is staying at least six feet apart, that we're wearing our face masks whenever we are not in our rooms or in our apartments, that we wash our hands frequently, that we stick to our zones. And we have six zones actually on our campus right now. Uh, the reason is because with that one positive case at Seabury, Seabury is now being separated from Cornelia House. So we have Seabury, we have Cornelia House, we have Episcopal Church Home, we have Iris Park Commons, then we have the Terrace and Midway Point, and then we have the Gardens. So those six zones, it is so vital that we stick to those six zones and not cross the zones. All right, so these practices, absolutely vital at all times. Uh, it's our only vaccine. Governor Walls has said that. Social distancing is our only vaccine, and it is effective, at least usually it's effective. We need to do all we can with vigilance. A reminder that it is the last day of Nurses Week today, so if you haven't yet reached out to a nurse or multiple nurses, do that. You probably will make their day, all right? Make sure you do that. A uh, reminder that there's going to be a bagpiper today at two o'clock, so that's just around the corner here, like 18 minutes away. And uh, I said yesterday, Jim Johnson is going to be the bagpiper. That is true, Jim Johnson is but not the Jim Johnson that lives at Cornelia House. Thank you for, for alerting me, Jim. Um, it is a different Jim Johnson. You know, in this world, there are a lot of Jim Johnsons. So um, the, it's not the one that lives at Cornelia House. Whichever one it is, we are really grateful. I understand that that, uh, that Jim that's playing the bagpipes is going to be also in full costume. So if you open up your windows, you are likely to be serenaded by a bagpiper today at two o'clock. Okay, um, that brings me to a close for today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 1.30. And um, Phil Rose was going to join me. I'm not sure what happened. Oh, I do remember what happened, yes. <laughs> Phil cannot join us today. Uh, Phil, we miss you. Uh, take care, everyone. Be well. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 1.30.